Hi guys! Greetings from Portugal! I'm Sandra and in today's video we will explain how to install and set up a BL Touch sensor on a Creality Ender 3 V2 in 3 easy steps. So do you want to know more? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, as you know, the Creality Ender 3 V2 is equipped with a glass pad from stock which normally makes the print surface pretty flat. However, for the cases where the glass is not perfectly flat or you just want to have a BL Touch sensor on it, here's how you can do it. First, we need to get a way to secure the BL Touch sensor. The X-axis carriage of the V2 already has a couple of threaded holes dedicated for a leveling sensor so we can use those to secure the mount. On Thingiverse, there are several mount options for BL Touch installation on this printer. For this tutorial, we will use this one, but you can choose any one of them. For this one, you need to print these two pieces. We also use this BL Touch sensor from Triangle Lab. Inside the plastic box, you will find a couple of nuts and screws. You will need these to secure the sensor to the mount. You will also need a couple of M3 by 6 or by 8 mm screws to secure the mount to the carriage. So, start by placing the first screw on the lower hole on the carriage, but don't fully tighten it just yet. Take the top piece and slide it in. Then, use the second screw to secure the top piece. The two nuts are installed at the sides of the second piece. And then we place the sensor in it. Next, we pass the cables through the opening of the top piece. And secure everything with the two long screws that came with the BL Touch. Then we connect the small heather pins and secure the cable together with the hot end wires with the zip tie. Be careful not to strangle the PTFE tube. Ok, this part is done. Now we need to connect the extension cable to the board. There are four screws that we need to remove to open the cover panel. One is at the top under the bed. The other three are located at the bottom. Carefully take the cover out and disconnect the board cooling fan. The stock board is the Creality 4.2.2 and it's equipped with a dedicated connector for the leveling sensor. The connectors from the BL Touch extension cable will not fit correctly, so we recommend to get a 5 pin JST connector and pins and crimp this one instead using this color sequence. If you have a different BL Touch sensor or with different wiring colors, you need to match according to the pins. To make things easier, we will turn the image upside down for you to read the PCB markings correctly. On the board connector, you have the ground for the sensor, 5 volts for the sensor, and signal for the probe. Next is the ground for the trigger, and the last one is the signal for the trigger. Make sure you check your sensor's pin out and connect the wires to the right pins. As for the Z end stop cable, you can just remove it. If you can't get a JST connector, there's a workaround which is to carefully pull the plastic piece of the connector out and connect the BL Touch directly on the pins. If you do this, be very careful not to damage the pins or the solder joints. 
There's also an alternative way to connect the sensor and it's by using the Z and stop connector instead. For that, you need to connect the three sensor wires on the five pin connector and the two trigger wires on the Z and stop two pin connector. Some users reported random failures while sensing the bed when the sensor is connected to the dedicated BL Touch connector. So, if you have this issue, connect this way instead. Next, arrange the cables and pass them through between the metal profile and the power supply. Close the cover panel and from the top side arrange and secure the cables. Make sure the wires go through the side and that they will not get caught by the bed when it's moving back and forth. You can use a zip tie to secure the cables near the extruder. And then connect them to the sensor. Make sure you match the wire colors between them. With everything connected, turn the power on and check if the sensor initializes correctly. Finally, move the X carriage left and right and check if everything is ok and the wires are not stretched. As for the Z end stop, you can disconnect it and remove it. For the BL Touch to work, we will need to modify the printer's firmware. So get a blank memory card and insert it in your computer. Make sure it's formatted as FAT32. There are several websites where you can get the new firmware from. From this website, you have a firmware version for the boards 4.2.2 and 4.2.7. If you have the stock 4.2.2 board, this is the one you need. Inside the zip file, you can find the firmware for the BL Touch with and without adapter. Extract the one without the adapter. You can also find BLTouch firmware versions on the Smith 3D webpage and Gyre's GitHub page. For all of these, the files are already compiled, so you don't have to do anything else. Ok, copy the file to the memory card and then insert the memory card in the printer and turn the printer on. One important note you need to know on the Ender 3v2 is that for the firmware update to work, you cannot use the same name twice for the bin file, otherwise the printer will not load the new file. All these options that we have just shown will only work if the BL Touch is connected to the dedicated BL Touch connector on the board, which means that if you want to use the Z and stop connector instead, or want to make your own modifications to the firmware, you will need to download it from Marlin website instead. If you don't want to go through the compiling procedure, you can skip the following explanation and download our already compiled firmware for the BL Touch connected to the Z and Stop connector on our Patreon page. So, back to Marlon. You need to download the raw firmware and extract the files. You also need the config files for the Creality Ender 3v2. The config files can be found here so you need to download these as well. Copy the config files into the Marlin folder by replacing the ones that are already in there. Next, use Visual Studio Code with Platform I.O. to enable the BL Touch and compile the firmware. For the BL Touch to work, you need to enable the following lines. The first one indicates that we are using the probe connected to the Z and stop pins. Make sure you have this line enabled just like this. Next is the line to use the probe for homing the Z. Enable it by removing the two slash characters at the beginning of the line. Scroll down a little bit more and enable the BL Touch line. Next is to define the probe offset. You can check the X and Y offset in the author's information on Thinkiverse, and that's what we will use. Next, we need to enable the type of leveling. We will use the bilinear leveling, so we need to enable this one. We will also want to restore the leveling after the G28 command, 
so we need to enable this one as well. Last but not least is the Z Safe Homing. This will make the print head move to the center when homing the Z axis. Ok, the firmware is ready to be compiled. Just make sure you have the correct environment typed in. And then press the small check at the bottom to compile. If everything works ok, you should see the success in green letters and the compiled firmware can be found inside these folders. Ok, so here you have the file, which is this one, with the bin extension. Then copy the file to the root of the memory card, put the card in the printer's memory card slot and turn the printer on. The printer will then automatically update the firmware. The printer's display will stay black for a few seconds and then will initialize. If you have downloaded one of the Creality's versions, the screen might start with a different language, but don't worry. Go through the menus and look for the option where it has the CN selected and change to EN for English. If you go to Info, you can check the firmware version you just installed. For example, the version we have on our Patreon page is version 2.0.7.2, which is the latest at the moment. Ok, since the probe is at a different height when compared with the nozzle, we will need to type in this difference. Even if you have installed the same sensor and the same mount, you still need to do this calibration, and it's done here, in the Z offset menu. But before we can do that, we need to guarantee that the print surface is at least somewhat leveled. If you have the print surface unleveled up to a certain point, the leveling procedure will not work correctly. So, we lower the Z manually until the nozzle is close to the bed, and we check if there is any difference along the surface. If yes, then you need to level the bed with the paper and the leveling knobs. If not, move the Z up until it's halfway and then run the auto home. The printer will home the X and Y axis and then will move the print head to the center to home the Z. The probe will be extended and the Z will start to go down. And at that point, use the sensor's box to trigger the probe. This is to test if everything is working ok and if it's being triggered correctly. If the probe fails to sense the box and continues to go down, turn the printer off immediately. Now it's safe to run the leveling sequence. While it's doing the leveling, keep your finger close to the off switch in case something goes wrong. As we mentioned before, some users experience random failures when connecting the BLTouch in the dedicated BLTouch connector on this board. If you notice that too, just change the trigger wires to the Z and stop connector. Ok, so for the offset calibration, you can use one of the two methods that we will explain now. The first method is the following. Make sure your Z offset value is zero and start by pressing Auto Home. The BL touch will sense the bed at the center and then stop at a certain height. From the BL touch mount information on Thingiverse, the author says the Z offset might be around minus 1.6 mm. So, we go to the Z offset menu and change the value. But we'll have to go past the minus 1.6, so we will enter minus 2.5. Ok, run the auto home again and then move the Z down using the Move Axis menu. The Z axis will not move as you rotate the knob. It will only move after pressing the knob. So, you have to lower the value by steps and pressing the knob in between steps for the Z to move. Stop when the nozzle is almost touching the surface. Then, get a 0.1 mm thick piece of paper and lower the value step by step by pressing the knob until the nozzle touches the paper. At that point, the value you get on the screen is the value you will need to remove from the Z offset. Ok, go to your slicer and load an STL file. Any STL will work because it will be used just to test and fine-tune the Z offset. Then go to your slicer settings, enable the brim 
and increase the number of brim lines. This is just to give you more time to adjust the first layer. You can revert to your old settings after the calibration is done. Next is the start G-code. After the G28 command, create a new line and include the command M420 space S. This will enable the bed leveling and use the saved mesh. An alternative is to use the G29 command instead. This will run the leveling sequence and probe the bed every time before each print. Unlike the brim settings that you can revert after the calibration, the command in the start G code must always be there as long as you have the leveling sensor installed and running. OK, you can then start the sprint. The printer will start printing the brim lines, and at this time, press Tune and use the brim lines to adjust step by step the Z offset, and this way, tweak the offset. If you are not using our version, make sure you use small increments and keep pressing the knob each time you change the value for the Z to move. When you are happy with the result, take a look at the Z value. This will be your final value. OK, it's done. You can then click on Store Settings to save the data. And now, we will explain the second method on how to adjust the Z offset. Start by going to the slicer, enable the brim, and increase the number of brim lines. Go to the Start G code and, as before, add the line to do the leveling after the G28 command. Make sure your Z offset value is zero and start the print as a dry run, or in other words, without filament inserted. With the Z offset at zero, the printer will be printing too far from the surface. At this point, press Tune and lower the Z offset value. While changing the value, check if the Z is going down as you rotate the knob. For our firmware version, the Z will turn as you change the value. For other firmware versions, and if it doesn't, you have to lower the value by steps and pressing the knob in between steps for the Z to move. When you get the nozzle close to the surface, stop the print and load some filament. Start the print again, press Tune, and tweak the value slowly until you get the first layer at the correct height. Again, if the firmware version you are using does not move the Z on the fly, change the value slowly and step by step while pressing the knob in between steps for the Z to move. The value you get in the Tune menu while printing will be the final Z offset value. You can then click on Store Settings to save the data. OK, and the Z offset adjustment is done. You can now start your prints and have fun. And that's it you guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. We will see you guys next time. Bye!